Speaking with some finance folks, they mentioned the reason why they've not adopted Power BI for their reporting. Some of them is thinking uh, there are some things finance related calculations that they can't achieve in Power BI. And looking at some of those, they mentioned okay, forecasting is one of them. In Excel, it's pretty much straightforward, pretty much easy to do forecasting. When you have your data modeled correctly, your calculations are running correctly. That's pretty much direct to achieve. But in Power BI, they've, they've tried to exploit different same options where they would be able to forecast their data into the future. But before we go into that, for some of us that might be watching this video and we are not from a finance background or related studies, forecasting simply implies that we are trying to use our data to look at the future. We are looking into the future to say, what is possible in the future? We might have sales. We have sales data running from probably January of the year till um, July of the year. So, I mean, at the moment we're in July. But looking at that, we want to use our reporting tool to tell us what's possible from July down to December. What would be uh, what? What is the likely? pattern we would observe in ourselves. That is what forecasting is about. Forecasting is a way of learning from what pattern already exists within the data and using that to predict, sort of predict what would happen in the future. So when it comes to reporting, one is before you can forecast, you must have some amount of data that is that has some data attributes. So if you have data and um, there is, the, the data is not tied to any data attribute, obviously you cannot do a forecast. So you, you need to ensure that you have data and the data is tied to some dates. So now, this is Power BI. And one of the things we know is that when we want to visualize time-based reports, we need to use some specific chart. You don't just jump into this, you want to visualize something that's related to date, and then you're selecting a pie chart, a pie chart will not work for that. Or you're selecting something like um, a map, it, does, it doesn't just study. So you want to ensure that you're picking the right visual. One of the visuals that are pretty excellent for visualizing time-based report or doing time-based reporting is your line chart. So I have a place order for your line chart here already. So I'll just go on to populate this. I have it clicked on. So I would uh, select my year and I will select my revenue. So I'm visualizing my revenue by year. So in 2013, we made this amount of revenue in 2014. 2015, this is what we made. And 2016, this is what we made. So this is typically four years of data. What if we want to now project into the future to say, how much is it possible that we begin to make after 2016? So what we'll do is you have your chart selected like this. Ordinarily on your visualizations pane, you see that depending on the chart that you have selected, you would say this, this button here, that's for visuals generally, then you say a format your visual icon. But because this is a line chart and some other related charts, you get to say this third one, which says add further analysis to your visual. So let's select that. And now from here, there are a lot of options, excellent options that we can bring in from here, statistic related options. But this, the, the, the core of this video is not to look at the entire options. So I just want to focus on the forecast bit. And the forecast, you see, we have a group for forecasts right at the bottom. It is turned off by default. So before you use the first thing you want to do is to turn it on. So I'm going to turn that on, but still nothing has been seen here. So I would expand it. So once I expand on this, you see that um, now I have a sort of a projection, a, a different outlining out of my line chart so my line chart the actual values are the blue line 
and then there is something different going just up with some shadows around it. That is the focus side. And if you look at this chart very well, we'll notice that our data stopped on 2016. That is the actual. So we now have data for 2016 to 2026. So that's 10 years of forecast already. And what is it saying is by interpretation is that what is expected is that our revenue should continue to grow in this pattern and this has only been learned from what um, we have in the actual data and the second thing to note if i stay on 2018 for instance you'll see that we have the upper bound and the lower bound the forecast is the actual line in between but what is saying is there is every tendency that our revenue figure would resonates between two the, between the two bounds so it's either it is higher than the forecast value itself or it's lower than the forecast value but it's, it's projected that it's going to be within the shaded area that we can see sometimes you don't want to have 10 years of forecast 10 years of forecast might be might just be too much of a prediction to make most especially when you don't have enough data to feed into that and you're not running machine learning models so you may sort of want to reduce the number of years and in a way that might tell on the accuracy of what you're looking at as well so the way to manage that under your focus group you come here to where you have the focus length so it says 10 so if i want to reduce this to five years i'll just put a five here and i'll come to this button and say apply so when I say apply, it reduces my forecast to five years of forecast, and we'll say that we have a we have um, less data to look at, and then we have more space to to look at on our line chart. There are a couple of other things you may want to do to say that yeah we have a confidence interval. This is some pretty much a statistical thing. Probably we have some videos that would address some statistical thing that we have um, here on the analysis but the, the confidence interval the confidence level they all are somewhat around how, how confident are we what level of confidence have we deployed in this our forecast so 95 percent confidence 99 percent 97 percent what level of confidence is feeding into this and what what does that in, imply so maybe we have something to to talk to that um in some of our next release but you, you may want to do some formatting on the forecast line most especially because you are bearing in mind your users you don't want them to presume that this line is continuous and this this still talks about the actual amount you have made in the business no you don't want to confuse them so one of what is recommended is that your forecast is not actual so you want to make it dotted line and this is from the standard as well so i come here to the style and then i just uh, make it um, maybe a dashed a dashed line so it's it's not continuous yes something like this 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 is pretty much different from what we have seen from the actual lines ultra line is continuous is solid but some um, the forecast is not solid and it's not um, continuous uh, you may also want to make it a bit more transparent or depending so you, you want to make it lighter or however just to ensure that people your report users they are not confused as to what they are saying so pretty much simple pretty much direct how to build forecast into our power bi report line chart specifically thanks a lot i hope we found this helpful um let's stay tuned for our next release